Hi, this is Dr. Shobha Shankar, Professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Vidya Vadaka College of Engineering, Mysore. So in this session, we will now see the economic generation scheduling when transmission losses are included in the system. So previously we have seen So we have previously we have seen the two cases when in the first case transmission losses along with generator limits were neglected and in the second we have considered the limits on the generators and in the third now we are considering the economic dispatch or economic generation scheduling including transmission losses so we know that the generation point and the load point are not at the same place so generally the load would be too far from the generation point and therefore the power that is generated in the generating plant needs to be transferred to the load point through long transmission lines therefore transmission losses are significant part of the generation and this should be considered in the generation schedule for economic operation so the mathematical formulation with transmission losses can now be stated as so the objective function is to minimize the total fuel cost so total fuel cost is given by ft is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to ng fi that is sum of the individual fuel cost such that the constraint what we have now is such that total generation is equal to demand plus losses previously we have seen that when transmission losses were neglected total generation was equal to total demand but now since transmission losses are included the generation should now supply for the losses in addition to meeting the load so therefore we have the constant pd plus pl is equal to total generation so pl is the total loss and pd is the total demand and summation i is equal to 1 to ng pgi is nothing but the total generation so the lagrange function can now be written as so we are able to express lagrange function as l is equal to so the objective function that is ft plus the constraint what we have that is augmented with the vector lambda so therefore we are able to express l as ft plus lambda into pd minus of summation some of the um, power output of the generators minus of pl the minimum point is obtained when we partially differentiate this lagrange function with respect to the two variables namely pgi and lambda so for the first minimum point so partial differentiation of l with respect to pgi it is same as partial differentiation of ft with respect to pgi minus lambda into 1 minus of partial differentiation of pl with respect to pgi and it's equal to 0 and further we also have the second expression partial differentiation of l with respect to lambda would be same as pd minus of summation losses so which is same as the constant so pgi should be equal to pd plus pl or pd minus of pgl minus of pd so since we know that partial differentiation of ft is same as uh, partial differentiation of ft with respect to pgi is same as a uh, differentiation of fi with respect to pgi so we get this expression dfi by dpgi plus lambda into partial differentiation of pl with respect to pgi to be equal to lambda and further lambda can be expressed as dfi by dpgi into 1 divided by 1 minus of partial differentiation of pl with respect to pgi wherein the term 1 divided by 1 minus of partial differentiation of pl with respect to pgi is called the penalty factor of the plant i so which is also indicated as li so therefore the coordination equation with losses can be now expressed as lambda i is equal to dfi by dpgi into li so when transmission losses are neglected then the penalty factor li would be equal to 
This is because Li is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus of partial differentiation of PL with respect to PGI, which would be equal to 0. And therefore, Li would be equal to 1 when transmission losses are neglected. And therefore, we have the equation lambda being equal to DFI by DPGI. So the minimum operation cost is obtained when the product of the incremental fuel cost and the penalty factor of all the units is the same. So previously, we didn't have penalty factor when losses were neglected. And we had the condition that incremental fuel cost of each one of the plants should be same. Whereas now, along with the incremental fuel cost, we also need to consider incremental fuel cost and penalty factor of all points is the same. So the general expression for power loss in the power system is given by PL is equal to summation M, summation N, PGM, BMN, PGN. When in PGM and PGN are the power outputs of the generators and BMN corresponds to the loss coefficient. And it depends upon the load composition. So for a two plant system, we are able to express PL as B11 PG1 square plus two times PG1 B12 PG2 plus B22 PG2 square. So we will see in the next uh, session, how are we able to obtain this expression? That is derivation of transmission loss formula. So we will now take a few examples on economic generation scheduling with transmission losses. So let us consider we have a generator which is supplying a load. An incremental change in load of 4 megawatt requires generation to be increased by 6 megawatt. The incremental cost at the plant bus is rupees 30 per megawatt hour. What is the incremental cost at the receiving end? So here it is mentioned that a generator is supplying a load. And the change in the load of 4 megawatt requires generation to be increased by 6 megawatt. That means to say that the generation will always be greater than the load because it also needs to supply for the loss. And the incremental cost at the plant is given by 30 rupees per megawatt hour. So we need to find out what is the incremental cost at the receiving end. So given, so at the plant bus, since there is only one generator, therefore we can say that at uh, bus one, we have the generator and at bus two, we have the load. So DF1 by DPG1 is equal to 30. So this is the one line diagram of the example what we have considered. So you can observe that there is a generator which is supplying for the load. And it is specified that if there is an incremental change in the load of 4 megawatt, then the generation needs to be increased by 6 megawatt. That means to say that the incremental power loss in the transmission line is 2 megawatt. So delta PL is equal to delta PT minus delta PD, which is equal to 2 megawatt. And lambda is the incremental cost at the receiving end. And it is given by lambda is equal to DF1 by DPG1 into so the incremental power generation the ratio of incremental power generation to the incremental low demand so therefore it's like lambda we get there is uh, the incremental fuel cost at the receiving end is 45 rupees per megawatt hour it can also be calculated as lambda can also be expressed as df1 by dpg1 into 1 divided by 1 minus delta pl by delta pg which again is the same 45 rupees per megawatt hour so next example, in a system with two plants, the incremental fuel costs are given by, so we have the incremental fuel cost expression for generator one and generator two because there are two plants and the system is running under optimal schedule with PG1 being equal to PG2 and it's equal to 100 megawatt. So if partial differentiation of PL with respect to PG2 is 0.2, Find the plant penalty factors for both the plants. We need to find out what is the penalty factor that is L1 and L2. Along with that, we also need to find out what is del PL by del partial differentiation of PL with respect to PG1. So we have the condition that for economic schedule with transmission losses is given by DFI by DPGI into Li is equal to lambda. So the incremental cost at the receiving end lambda is equal to incremental uh, fuel cost of the respective plant into the penalty factor. So wherein Li is nothing but 1 divided by 1 minus of partial differentiation of PL with respect to PGI. So for plant 2, it is specified that 
PG2 is 100 megawatt and therefore we have the expression of DF2 by DPG2 equation. So making use of that expression, we are able to find out what is lambda. So solving we get lambda, that is the incremental cost at the receiving end is rupees 30 per megawatt hour. Correspondingly, the penalty factor of plant 2 can also be found out as 1 divided by 1 minus 0.2 and it's equal to 1.25. And further, we are supposed to find out the penalty factor of plant 1. So therefore, we are able to express df1 by dpg1 into l1 to be equal to lambda. So lambda is known for us. 30 rupees per megawatt hour. So we are able to find out what is L1, penalty factor of plant 1, so which is equal to 1.428, from which we are able to solve for partial differentiation of PL with respect to PG1, and it's equal to 0.3. So next example, a two-bus system is shown in figure. If 100 megawatt is transmitted from plant 1 to the load, a loss of 10 megawatt is incurred. System incremental cost is rupees 30 per megawatt hour. Find the power output of the plants and power received by the load if the incremental fuel cost of the two plants are specified in rupees per megawatt hour. So we know what is DF1 by DPG1 and DF2 by DPG2. It is expressed in these two equations. So knowing DF1 by DPG1 and DF2 by DPG2, it is also specified that if 100 megawatt of power is transmitted from plant 1 to the load, then there is a loss of 10 megawatt. So therefore, we can. So this is the one line diagram of this example. We have a generator 1 as well as generator 2. And that you can observe that load is connected at the same bus to which generator 2 is connected. So when generator 2 supplies for the load, there will be no transmission losses because the bus at which the load is connected is same as the generator G2, which is connected to the same bus. Whereas if this load is supplied by G1, then power needs to be transferred through the transmission line between the two buses therefore there would be losses otherwise if power is load if the entire demand is supplied by g2 there won't be any losses so since the load is connected at bus 2 no loss is incurred when plant 2 supplies for the load therefore correspondingly we are able to express the b coefficient which are also called as the loss coefficients b12 and b22 to be equal to zero this is because when gen there won't be any losses. And we also know that PL can be expressed as for a two plant system, PL is B11 PG1 square plus B22 PG2 square plus two times B12 PG1 PG2. Since B12, B22 are zero, therefore PL is equal to B11 PG1 square. But as of now, we don't know what is the optimal output of the first plant. So we are able to express, so if we partially differentiate this expression of PL, we get day bar PL with respect to day bar PG1 is equal to 2 times B11 PG1. So from data we have PL to be equal to 10 megawatt if PG1 is 100 megawatt from which we get B11 as 0 0.001 per megawatt. And the coordination equation with loss is given as DFI by DPGA plus lambda into partial differentiation of PL with respect to PGA to be equal to lambda. Therefore, for plant one, we can express it as, from which we are able to calculate what is the power output of plant one. So for optimal generation schedule, or in order to ensure that the cost of generating the power is minimized or total fuel cost is minimized, the power output of the first plant should be equal to 175 megawatt. So correspondingly for plant two, we are able to find out what is PG2. PG2 is, so from the same coordination equation, we are also able to find out what is PG2 and it's equal to 250 megawatt. 
and further we can find out what is the total loss in the system so pl is equal to b11 pg square since b12 and b22 are equal to 0 so and that is equal to 30.625 megawatt and therefore we are able to calculate the demand as total generation minus total loss so it's equal to 394.375 megawatt so thank you